So today is May 15th. It's been raining. Actually, it might start raining again, but it's Friday, um, end of a work day, and I wanted to enjoy the yard and the front yard, but it's been raining. But I just realized I haven't done any type of updates with the front yard, and there's a lot going on here too. Um, there's a lot of seedlings flowers that are coming out so um, the, the the lilies are blooming the agapanthus as you can see right here these are the ones that I planted um, probably about two years ago and so I started refilling um, in between and really a lot of these plants are plants I already have and what I did was just divided them I didn't want to spend too much money on uh, new plants so a lot of uh, what you're gonna see are plants that I pulled from mature plants that I already have and stuff that are growing from last year um, and many of these too because they're ornamentals I always forget what the names are um, but uh, as you can see there's still some spaces really my my goal for this entire space is that you could barely see the ground that it's going to be filled with plants so what i try to do now are these little seedlings same as i did in the backyard i wanted to start a wildflower uh, section here and the ones that i bought from american meadows are uh, set specifically for the southwest for our zone nine and this is a half partial shade and full sun which is what this area gets so i know it doesn't look like much because um it's early on and again the, the seedlings are still small but another thing that's coming up are these calamansi uh, plants little seedlings because i normally also throw mulch from kitchen scraps uh, I mean compost stuff from the kitchen and so just to kind of keep feeding this um, area this used to be just all bushes and it was flat I, I don't know if you can tell but there's there's a slope here this one is actually this section is elevated so underneath all of that mound are layers of uh, branches and again it's a hogo culture technique that I've done in the backyard and the best thing about this section is it actually has a horse manure that I was able to get free from a friend from work who recently passed away may God bless his soul um, so his legacy kind of lives on here he's a dear friend of mine um, so a lot of the he has cows and horses and he raises them the horses and um, has a barn for them and everything but anyways moving on so a lot of these uh, mulch are you can see from the fallen leaves from the tree um, I did buy some of these from Enchanted Garden the plants and um, I've, I'm very bad at leaving labels so maybe out of all these plants 20% I keep labels um, about 60% I remember in my head what the names are and then 10% I forget <laughs> and then I have to google them so um, I got see I don't even know what this is I think this is a, it's not a sage but it's a Texas uh, native and these are um, primroses and cyclamens. Um, a couple of them I grew, uh, I bought from the store, and then some are donations from my neighbor. And then I have, of course, Mama Mary is here um, guarding. She's so pretty. Um, guarding my garden. Um, my whole goal is to have flowers around her. So like this is um, a flowering um, bush. It's a perennial and it's not a jasmine but it's similar to that. I forget what it is. It's very common so I wanted it to go up over here and then kind of trail over like a little arch and then cover this thick. Now 
traditionally for a Marian garden, um, you're supposed to have roses because that's what Mama Mary is um, associated with because she you know the the rosaries are um, uh, that that's the root word for rosary is a rose garden and so now I'm thinking whether I should plant roses I don't really I mean I like them but I don't like caring for them I feel like there's some of them take too much work and I really want a no fuss garden so what I try to do just to surround her with flowers or just have these um, annuals and perennials that would have blooms around her um, maybe if I get some roses that are small that might just be more um, closer to the ground um, and not much of a fuss to take care of then maybe I'll just have them kind of interspersed in these sub pockets in between the plants anyway so um, I do have lilies over there that's the african lily and this is one of those trees that kind of just grew um, and i researched it it's some type of sea um sea myrtle like a crepe myrtle but it's sea myrtle, sea myrtle it doesn't really have flowers but when it gives out blooms it's like these white feathery um, puff um, so it, i'm keeping it because it's it doesn't look like it's gonna be a big tree like my oak and it will be easier for me to control this all right so it's kind of pan around more of the leaves mulch here and here's the purple agapanthus now when i bought um all of these agapanthus at eastern gardens two or about two years ago now maybe um they were labeled as white and that's why i got that and i spread them around because you get you know clumps of um, plants in one pot sometimes and that's the best way to buy them is to look for the the pot that has the most cluster but i think like the um hydrangea these change color because of the acidity of the of the the soil and i'm not complaining because i love them i, I i'm glad it's like a bonus because i do want the purple um I, I like the white it's it's pretty and then this one we'll see in a few days this might be a mix of purple white um, it I had one yes last year where it was white with a purple tip and so cool um, here are a couple more uh, native plants that I bought from enchanted garden that's a sage and this one is supposed to be a small bush um, I forget what the name is but it's supposed to be real it has it's a it's a pollinator plant so it'll have these blooms that um, attracts the hummingbirds um, so I have more stuff here I got ferns so in between um, I gotta just clean these out but like these things that you see this little cover is here for protection of the wildflower seeds that i put down a few days ago uh, about a week now at this point um to protect it from the from the birds because the birds have been scratching and you can see i'll show you the section where i left it intentionally to un uncovered and there are my seeds that i had in my paper in some paper towels see the white section and they scratched it out so I wanted to fill this section in, but that's not happening. Um, zinnias, uh, some of them, well, most of them died off, so that's not successful. This is a calamansi tree that started from seeds. It's uh, gonna be a problem. <laughs> I need to keep it trimmed because um, I don't want it to get too big. Okay, so then here's another one that I'm kind of happy about. It used to look so bare. Um, all I had before here was really the spider lily. And they died on this section. I bought this um, uh, azalea from Houston Garden. And started planting around it. 
Now I have this monkey, I think this is monkey grass or something, but I have it in a clump in a, another part of the yard. And it dawned on me to just separate them and then fill in between and it it made it look better actually. So I don't know why I never thought about that uh, sooner. Um, because again, the intention is to pack as much plants in in the the beds as possible um, here's that same plant that was around the blessed mother but only in a pot and then i moved these pots here uh, just so decoration so that's my emergency calamansi tree just in case stuff happens or we need to move or i need to give it away this is my 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 reserve calamansi tree so i don't know how old it is now it should be about going on two years at this point um i had seeds here that didn't grow and then here's some more i i started inserting plants in between the bushes so here um are my um, other section with lilies and um, liriopes, um, caladiums, I think that's a caladium, and some elephant ears. So this, I'm building this section here. It doesn't look pretty right now. And again, the intention is to fill them as much as you can. Um, those are plants that I got from a neighbor for free and it really is not doing well on that side. Um, it should really be an indoor plant so i just put it in there as a cover or to as a, as a placeholder but i think eventually i'm gonna tear it out or move them repot them somewhere else maybe put them in the house um this mad tree right here this giant of a tree actually came from my brother's old house it was the only plant he had in the back and it was one of the first plants that I have ever attempted to put in the dirt. This was back then when I didn't know what I was doing. And that's why it kind of looks like it's just in place <laughs> incorrectly uh, because it should have been kind of flush to the right a little bit. But yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. And it's just liking that section I have once in a while i have to trim it uh, because it shades out some parts of uh, the plants that are around it um, okay so then here's the wedelia this is a, a plant that i 